I will call upon the Lord. Hey, everybody, City Limits, it's good to see you here tonight. I'm praying that uh, some of you can maybe get you a little cup of tea, cup of coffee, come sit on your favorite chair. I heard that it's after, it's after uh, 4 p.m., so that you're supposed to change into your p.m. pajamas. So I know many of you have I've got your daytime pajamas on. It's okay to switch into your TV pajamas, okay? And uh, hey, if you want to, you can get online and you can plug this in and make it a little bit bigger on your screen if you want. Just want you to know something for today. Uh, first of all, a kind of a short announcement and um, I'll make it again in a little while as more people come on. It's good to see you folks. I'm not gonna mention everybody's name, but I love seeing you. I can see you out there. Um, we've got some people uh, uh, that are in the background and they're following any prayer requests. So if you have a prayer request, I may not mention it, but if you'll put it down, please. I've got people uh, that are behind me and, and they're writing them down. And I want to spend some time in prayer because it's only through prayer that these things are going to change. Amen. So if, if, if you can, I want you to turn to the book of 2 Kings on your, either if you've got a hardcover Bible or, or, um, or if you've got a digital device, I want you to turn to uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. I was there about a week ago in the middle, but uh, there was something I was reading and it just kind of caught my heart, that, you know, and I wanted to keep on watching it. So as they're taking that, please, and, and I just want to say again, a welcome to anybody uh, who's been coming on the site. I took a look at uh, last week's uh, message, and what they say on metrics is that you check over three seconds uh, to see how many people have stayed on, and there was uh, 3,400 people. And, and, and so I just pray that people would stay on. I'm trying to, I'm not cheapening the services. I'm just trying to condense the, the message so that I can, I can give you time to think about it, pray about it. Okay, so uh, I just want you to send in those prayer requests. Pastor Harry, it's always good to see you. You're not uh, retired, but uh, refired. So in the book of Ruth, and um, I, excuse me, I mean, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, starting at verse 1. And let's pray first uh, today uh, before we enter into the word. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, and, and uh, they say now that uh, 50 states, uh, 50 states in the United States uh, have got some kind of opening. It's either a light orange or it's uh, something, a yellow or green. And, and some have green and some can have service. And we in Pennsylvania at this side, on the uh, southern side of PA and Jersey and New York are still in the red. So we're still going to be going virtual. But we're preparing to do some things uh, to our sanctuary and separate the chairs out every six feet and then have some family chairs and cleaning up the sanctuary. Plus tonight, I want you to look on our Facebook. Please look on our Facebook and make some comments. I'm gonna show you all the work that's being done. Uh, we're building a, a handball court in the gymnasium, also a basketball court, and our gym floor has already been done. Our, our third floor, all our children's church has all been painted up. All that old stuff is out. We've got LED lighting, and so uh, I can't wait for you. I want you to know, church, that all of your pastors, all of your pastors, all of your leaders and your board, we have not just been sitting around in our PJs, but we have been going on, on live and on Zoom and going to professionals I, I, who are learning how to transition and learning how to uh, make the church clean and be safe so we can have a soft entry so that nobody is touched and stuff like that. And I know that's going to be terribly hard for us because I like to hug people and, and, and you know, there's some things that we're not going to be able to do. But I just want you to stand by and allow us to set the sanctuary up as it's supposed to be and then pray that that time is going to come very, very soon. Amen. OK, so I, I, I just want to thank you for that so much. So what do you do when you have all these kind of problems and everything? You know, all these challenges that we're having now. Uh, I've been taking them as a learning curve, as a way to start to learn some stuff that, you know, I was very techy 25 years ago. Then it just, it just passed me, you know, it passed me. And, and I'm learning to be techy again, you know, so that we can get our message out there. Uh, today I got a message from somebody who is in York and they're sending a tithe check to us. 
they wanted to know how do you use that textable thing. And they said, you know what? I guess I'm not a techie. I'll send you a check. I closed on a house. I'll send you a check. And I was like so touched in my heart that somebody that far out is listening to us. And somebody in the Bronx and stuff like that. And it's just an awesome thing in Jersey, you know. And, and, and so thank you so much for being with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, be with us, Lord. God, and direct everything that we do and say tonight, Lord God. Allow people to, to uh, if it's an unspoken prayer request, uh, then just put unspoken and put their name. And we'll, uh, we'll just pray for it that way privately, Lord God. And you know what the need is. And if it's something, uh, somebody got cancer or something, I want you to put that down there so that we can start a prayer list and begin to have prayer. I'm going to surprise you with how we're going to have prayer pretty soon. It's going to be more than often, more than often. Amen. Amen. So I want you to turn in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Start to read with you about, about our brother Elisha, prophet, and the widow's oil. And I want to see how, how it pertains to us. I'm talking about a woman here who was at the end of a rope. Her husband had died. He had not left anything to them. He didn't leave her an inheritance or anything. So she has these two children and, and now she's got debt. You know, she's got debt and like almost everybody's broke. And, and he was a prophet. I mean, he was a guy, a servant. He was a servant under Elisha. And now she's in this quandary where she doesn't know what to do because she's thinking like, man, I mean, what can I do? They're coming to take my sons and sell them into slavery. They're going to have to be slaves so that my debts are paid. I mean, can you imagine losing your babies? We're here thinking of COVID-19 and, and what's going to happen and when are we going to open? I don't have money. You know, I've got more months uh, uh, than I've got money at the end of the month and, and stuff like that. What do you do when things come crashing down, when, when all you hear on the news is negativity and, and, and man, all, the, all, all those broadcasting systems, all they want to do is play on our fears and play on our fears. And we as believers do not have that option, that privilege. We have to start praying and praying and believing in the word of God. This church is going to commit to praying more, even if I've got to start coming in and praying and asking some of our other pastors, I want you to come in and take a day. We're going to pray. Come in and take a day. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray online and pray live and have people taking the uh, request. And then we're going to sit on the chairs behind me and we're going to pray for every single need that we can. Amen. Somebody say amen out there. Threw me a little heart. Okay. So now, now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha. Second Kings chapter four, starting at verse one. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elijah. She said, your servant, who is my husband, is dead. And you know he was a servant of yours and he feared the Lord. Come. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Think about this. And Elisha said to her, so what shall I do for you? What do you want me to do? Man. I mean, I'd expect a little bit more than that from a man of God. But he says, "Ah, so what do you want me to do? And I want you to follow the story because I just saw this about a week ago. And I just kind of mused on it and and just kind of nurtured it. But I I went to another sermon I preached last week. But I saw this and I thought, I got to come back to this and look around. So the prophet says to her, what do you want me to do? (laughs) What shall I do for you? He says like this, so what shall I do for you? Tell me, uh, uh, what have you in your house? He asked her, uh, he asked her, what do you have in your house? She says, "Uh, your servant has nothing. Listen, your servant has nothing. I've got zeros. I've got nothing. I've got nothing in my house except a jar of oil. I've got a little jar of oil. I'm sorry, I don't know what size it doesn't say here. Then he said to her, so Elisha the prophet says to her, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Keep that in your mind. I want you to keep that in your head. I want you to remember that. And I want you to go borrow empty vessels, borrow empty vessels and not too few. 
See how your Bible reads it. Not too few. If I could say it in uh, my neighborhood version, it would be, I want you to go out and I want you to get as many vessels as you can. Now, if it were me, small in faith, I'd want to go out and get teeny weeny vowels. I'd say, Troll, find me all the little vowels you can. Because that's how much my faith is. But he was telling her, you go out there and you get everything you can. Everything you can. Bring me jars. Bring me everything. Go out and send your boys out there. Get everything you can and bring them into your house. So watch this. Empty. 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 Come on now. Said it three times for emphasis. Empty vessels. Number four. And not too few. Verse four. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons. Did you hear me? I said, shut the door behind yourself and your sons. You got to, sometimes when things are tough, I got to get to a private place. He says, shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and she shut the door behind herself and her sons and she poured. And as they poured, they brought vessel to her. When the vessel was full, she said, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. There are no more vessels. There's no more empty vessels, mom. We got every empty vessel we could. Keep that in mind. There's no other. It says immediately after the vessels were full, there was no more vessels. When there was no more empty vessels, it says the oil came to a stop. There was no more in the jar. Oh, Rabbi, hallelujah. Then the oil stopped flowing. Verse 7. She came again and told the man of God, Elisha. <laughs> Elisha, what should I do? What should I do? Tell me, okay, I did what you told me. I got all the empty vessels, bought them into my house, shut the door. I poured it in. I ran out of vessels. Then the oil stopped. What should I do? How do I get out of this mess I'm in? And he tells her. He went, she went to the man of God. Keep that in mind. He said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons can live on the rest. Meditate on that for a minute. Go sell the oil. And you and your family can live on the rest. Let me tell you, the first thing is, is this woman is out of hope. This woman is thinking that her children are going to be taken as slaves. This, uh, this woman is thinking, my, I had a husband. He was a prophet. He was a servant. He was a man of God. And look at the mess I'm in. And I want you to see something very important that happens here. Now, I start at verse 1. Now, the wife of one of the prophets cried to Elisha. When you don't know, uh, number one, when you don't know what to do, you better know where to go. When you don't know what to do, at least know where to go. When she found out that she didn't know what to do, she was in a compromised situation. She said, I may not know what to do, but I know where to go. I got to go to the man of God. And you and I today, when we don't know what to do, we got to go to Jesus and say, Jesus, you got to help me because I've run out of things. I don't know what to do. I've thought about it all. I've, I've, I've thought it in my mind. I just, I do not know what to do. So the first thing is that when you don't know what to do, at least know where to go. And we got to go to Jesus. Come on, somebody. She knew that if she went to the Lord, she knew that her husband trusted in the Lord. Although he didn't leave her anything, I don't know why, and it doesn't say, and I won't speculate. But it does say that she knew to go to the man of God at that time. That's who you go to, to the man of God. Go to the man of God and ask him, I don't know what to do. And he tells her, and, and, and then this is what he tells her. He says, what am I supposed to do? What's he trying? What is Elisha trying to do with this woman here? 
What do you want me to do? I mean, how am I supposed to help you out of this? Then he asked her the question that we should be asking ourselves every single day from here on in. What's in your house? What's in your home? Let me change that word to what's in your temple. What have you already been given that you're not using that God has already gifted you with that you have not been using because you underestimate yourself. Number two is that find out what's in your house. Find out what you have. Why? Because we underestimate ourselves. I ask somebody tell me, well, I'm just addressed. I, I, I just pass out mail. I said, man, if you didn't pass out mail, I wouldn't get mine. Man, I'm just, I, man, I, I'm just, I was scared to tell you, Pastor Jim, I'm working on a garbage truck. I said, bro, do you know what I do? Every time they call out all the doctors and they clap for them and they fly the blue angels over and everything. I pray for the postal guy. I pray for the bus driver. I pray for the guy that picks up junk and has to put his hands around stuff that people have been using garbage all day and throw it into something and smell it. I pray for those guys too because they are heroes as well. Don't you think you're nothing? You are something. There's a gift in you, in your temple, in your home, in your house. Already God has gifted you. He's equipped you for what you need to do. But you know what happens is sometimes in order to release what God has placed in you. I've got to empty myself out. I've got to realize that I've come to the end of my rope. Good to see some of you saying amen out there. It goes on, the story goes on. Number three, faith comes into play here because, because she's told, I want you to go into your house and I want you to lock that door behind you. So number three is that faith must have action. I can't say, I believe, I believe, I believe, but I don't do nothing about it. I got to believe then I got to stand on the promise that I'm standing on what I believe. I believe the promises of God. I believe that God is my Jehovah Jireh. I believe that he is my provider and that he will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. Faith is going to require you to do something. Only an empty vessel can be filled. You can't fill a full vessel. Somebody who's full of themselves, you can't fill them with nothing. They're full of themselves. But if you've got an empty vessel, oh, that you can fill. So faith comes into play here. And take a look at what it says. But the creditors came and they're going to take my children as slaves. And he says, uh, uh, what do you have in your house? Uh, your servant has nothing. She thought nothing of herself. But there was a jar of oil. The anointing, hallelujah. Go outside and borrow all you can. That's a step of faith. Can you imagine what your neighbors would be thinking of you? If you're so broke, I can't pay attention. And you go out and start asking people to give you their empty jars. I got a full one. No, 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 no. I just want the empty ones. Give them all. I'll take the big one too. Yeah, give it to me. They must have thought she was going nuts. But that's a step of faith that when God tells you to do something in your soul, it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people are thinking about you. All that matters is that you're being obedient to what you've heard the man of God say to you. And we need to get to that place. Stop hearing all this negativity and stand on the fact that my God shall supply all my needs. I've never been, I've never seen the righteous for, uh, forsaken or begging for bread. It says this. Take the empty vessels, not just a few, then go into your house and shut the door behind you. Shut yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels, empty vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So when they came, he shut the door behind them and they began to pour. And as they poured, they bought vessel after vessel after vessel. When the vessel, it was full, she said to her son, I want another one. Bring me another one. And he said, Mom, there's no more. We got everybody's empty vessel. Oh, Rabbi Shah. Woo! I got it. A download right now, man. God downloads people too. I, I don't know that we're electronic, but he downloads. Remember that. 
We got every empty vessel we could from everybody around here. Oh my goodness. So she went and she shut the door. You put the vessels on her. Verse 6. When the vessels, they were full, full. She said to her son, I want you to bring me another. He said, there, are, there is no other. Then the oil stopped. The oil of God, the anointing of God, the blessing of God will always stop when the need is met. Are you following me? It doesn't look like it yet. All she's got is a, a whole house full of oil. But the oil stops as soon as the need is met. I never want to be a person that had an empty jar and didn't give it to that lady. Think about that for a little bit. Verse 8, excuse me, 7. She came and told the man of God. So she comes back and tells the man of God, hey, okay, I got all this oil. What's next? What? Now what do I do? Now what do I do? I got all this oil. Now what do I do? And he said, and the man of God said to her, verse 7, go sell the oil, pay off all your debts, and you and your sons live on the rest. Oh, my goodness. Father in heaven, I pray that they would get this last couple of notes. This is not going to be long, but I'm hoping it's going to be powerful, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. I want you to see a couple of things here. Come on now, I want you to see a couple of things here. The first thing I want you to see is that this woman was at the end of a rope. Just like many of us are. There ain't enough money. There ain't enough this. There ain't enough that. I can't see my kids. I'm lonely. I'm frustrated. I, I, I'm, I am distracted by everything. All I hear on that stupid news that everybody's got on every television in my house is bad news. And she realized that when I'm at this point, listen, when I don't know where to go, I got to know who to go to. And she went to God. Amen. And the very second thing is find out what's in your house. Find out what's in your temple. Find out what's in your home. Find out what God has already given you that he's trying to get the flow out of you. All of us think, well, I'm just to this. I'm just to that. I'm just a garbage collector. I'm just a mailman. I'm just a painter. I'm just to this. I just take care of the church. I just drive. I just do the food. Bag. I just do this. I do that. I just clean the church. I just listen to me. Every one of those jobs is worthy. It, 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 it is honorable in the eyes of God. If you do it as unto the Lord, it's all Jesus stuff. But stay with me. My sons are going to be sold into slavery. Your servant, he says, when you look at this, I want you to go out and get all the empty vessels you can. Is that a sign of faith? I want you to think about that. People, her neighbors must have thought she was more toasted than a box of cornflakes. Uh, uh, she was cracked up. I'm sorry. I think that was a joke. More toasted than a box of Wheaties. And I'm sure that they thought that she had lost it. She's, uh, she's out of her mind. And this woman's knocking on our doors asking for empty vials, empty jars, empty cans, anything we got empty. Empty. I said empty. Did you hear me say empty? Give me anything you got that's empty and it's going to be full. And then she says, she went to her house. She was obedient. She closed the door and by faith, this is where she exercises her faith. She goes, she closes that door. She does what the man of God says. Start pouring the oil out of that little jar. Just start pouring it. Here, here it comes. My mom, I got it up. Mama, just keep them coming. 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 I need another one. He says, there's no more. We got everybody's empty jars. She goes back to the man of God and says, so what do I do? I got all this oil now. They're still taking my kids as slaves. He says, oh, honey, that oil you got is the best oil that could ever be gotten. It's the most precious oil. It's so expensive. Now I want you to imagine this for a minute. I use Trell and Lisa. I'll bother her. I got a couple of people here. I got a couple of people here. Brittany's here. If I got a nice vase jar off of her, let's say, nice one. I mean, it's nice. It belonged to her grandmother. She's, ah, 
Pastor Jim is asking for empty stand. No, okay, it's been sitting in the corner. I'll give it to her. If she saw me a week later with that same vase and I'm down at the market and I'm selling it full of oil to somebody, she'd be pretty upset with me, wouldn't she? Are you following me? Imagine all those empty ones. And here is my point. Are you ready? Number five is your obedience is not only going to bless you, but everybody you touch. You see, she took those empty ones and she took them back to the people she had gotten them from. And she said, I, I'm, I'm just imagining it's not the word. And took them back to the people that they came from when they were empty. And she said, here, this is probably worth $100 if it was in today. That's all I know. But God said, give it to you for 20 This one's worth $500. But God said, give it to you for $50. This is worth that much. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm trying to tell you that this woman, by her being obedient, she not only got blessed, she not only got free. She not only freed her sons, but she blessed everybody around her. Anybody who had an empty vessel. If your vessel is empty tonight, I'm telling you, come and get the oil of God and be anointed and be filled to full and free. <laughs> is anybody following me? Is anybody following me? She went to the man and got, what do I do? Go sell him. Who would you sell that to? Sell it to the people who had it and it was empty. So what do you do now in the midst of this COVID? Maybe you're in a tough spot. Maybe, I know I'm used to, I'll call people and say, hey, listen, is there anything I could give for anything that you need to know? We say, because they feel it's an imposition. No, nah, no, I'm good. I'm good. How about if I say, hey, I'm on my way to Walmart. I'm coming by your house. on right? Can I pick something up for you? I'm going to pick something up for you. If you don't tell me anything, I'm going to bring you a big giant box of toilet paper. Right? And you ask them and you tell them, listen to me, I'm coming to your house. God told me to come to your house. I'm doing something by faith. I'm, listen, I'll be at Home Depot. Do you need something? I'm going there anyway. And we got to start treating each other that way. Anybody we know that's got an empty vessel. If you've got a prayer need. If your heart is empty right now, if you feel like you're alone and you've been suffering, I want you to write that prayer request in. People are right behind me, right in front of me, taking that down. And I want you to write that down and we're going to pray that those needs are met, that God will fill your cup, that he will fill you to the full and to overflowing, that not only you, but everybody you touch will be blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tomorrow's going to be Thursday. I see a lot of ladies out there. I see some men out there too. Thank you. I wanted to share with you that tomorrow at one o'clock, I'm going to take a little ruck. That means a little walk. I'm going to take it down on Sand Island. I got my mask with me. I got my gloves with me. I got some sanitizer. And we're going to walk six feet apart. Only the men. And next week it'll be men and women. Six feet apart on Sand Island, about two miles and two miles back. If you got a wheelchair, I'll push you. I'll push you. I got a couple of other people already signed up with me. We're going to meet here in the parking lot tomorrow at one o'clock and take a six foot prayer walk. And then we're going to start praying at City Limits Assembly of God. So please, wives, I want you to tell your husbands to, uh, to bring a candy bar, a little bottle of water, and a mask. And I have a couple of extra masks if somebody doesn't have one. And just come on and take a walk. I'm not going to take a long. I'm not going to take you like a Marine. I'm just going to, we're going to walk and talk at six feet apart, talk loud and make noise. And I let the city hear us praying. Amen. Folks, at this time, this woman gave all she had, and in giving all she had, 
she was able to give to everyone. Now it's time to receive our Lord's, not mine, our Lord's tithe and offering. Brother Trout, if you would. Thank you. I symbolically lift this. I ask you that if you are sending in tithe and offering, I don't know who it is that controls that. I believe it's Jen. Could you put down a 302 on Ridge Avenue? City Limits, Assembly of God. It's at 302 on Ridge Avenue, Allentown, Pennsylvania, 18102. If you're giving on Textable and you go to the City Limits Assembly of God Facebook site, there's a tutorial there that shows you how to give on Textable. Textable does not take your money out in a repetitive mode. It takes out exactly what you give it and leaves it there until you put it back on. Father in heaven, bless this offering, Lord. For your glory we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to give you a few updates. Number one, as I want you to pray for uh, Pastor Heather's got a class on Thursdays at 1 p.m. I want you to join that. Join that class. Me, Pastor Jimmy, I've got a class called uh, Catch, Catch the Wind of the Spirit. And I've got some people that come, uh, come to that class. But my next class is going to be the uh, Life of Christ. And it's going to be an open class. Uh, so please come to that. Pastor Bev has a class on Tuesdays, and hers starts at 1 p.m. Now, as some of you saying, Pastor Jimmy, I work. You know, I'm still working. I got my job. You know, I'm one of them trash guys. I'm one of them guys that drives. I'm one of them guys that are driving a truck or a bus or something. Okay. Well, I want you to know that we've talked, the staff has talked a bit, and we're going to change some of those hours to evening hours. It's not going to be at dinner hours, but a little bit more evening so that you can enjoy that and maybe make it 45 minutes. Thank you for all the love. Also, when you know Pastor Sherry has been doing a great job, has he been doing a great job of putting out these puppet shows and these stories and everything and, 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 and all kinds of stuff on arts and the kids doing things, please do that. I'm going to be putting up a couple of Bible quizzes. It's a Bible crossword puzzle. I'm going to be putting that online. I want you to see who can fill that out first and you get a gift from me. I won't tell you what it is yet, okay? And I also want you to know that all of your pastors... Your leaders and your board are praying for you. We miss you. I miss you. I'm sorry if I haven't called you. I'll do that. I'll start doing that. Thank you so much for all your love. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. Now, I just want to show you. There was a couple of you. Kim. Kimmy Rivera. And I want you all to... I want you all to join in with me. It's not, a, it's not a private prayer request. It's open. But she's not been feeling well. So let's pray right now. Uh, folks, if you'll join me, uh, those of you that are here. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, and we pray for Kim right now. Father in heaven, that you would touch her body, Lord. Touch her mind. Touch her soul. Take away any anxiety, any stress. Take away any fever, take away any sickness that may be trying to attack her. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our sister right now. In the name of Jesus, let her be free. Completely free. That by the name of Jesus, there is freedom, there is power, there is healing. In the name of Jesus, there is victory, Lord. We pray for Kim's grandson, Jacob. He's having major surgery in the morning. And we pray for him. And pray uh, that you'd be with our grandson, Jacob. And that Jacob, Ma Michelangelo Rivera. I'm sorry, I got to pause for a second. My brother, Mickey Rivera from Philadelphia just tuned in. Mickey, it's so good to see you. God bless you, man. Awesome. I miss my mom. Kim's grandson, Jacob, having surgery. I don't know what kind of surgery it is. I know Kim knows and I know that God knows. If she wants us out to know, I'm sure she'll tell us. But Father, I pray that any time a doctor goes to a baby with a knife, has to do surgery and they have to do the anesthesia, that's always dangerous. It's never easy. 
It's never easy on the child. It's never easy on the mother. Never ever easy on the mother or the parents. So we pray for Jacob right now, Lord. We pray for safe, for healing. Lord God, as a matter of fact, right now, I pray for the doctor. I don't even know his name. I pray for Jacob's doctor, that you would touch that doctor, that he get the best night's sleep tonight he's ever gotten, that he'd wake up anointed and rested at the top of his field, and that that baby is going to be in the greatest hands, that that man is going to treat that child as if Jacob was his own baby boy. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Give us hunger to pray more, God. We pray for the people that have shared these needs. And we want people to share more as we have services because prayer needs to be an important part of what we do here at City Limits Assembly of God. So we thank you. Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for interceding. Thank you. I see the little notes here. If Kim could see it, people are praying for Jacob right now. And it says, good to see. Thank you. Keep praying. Hallelujah. Church, it's time for, for um, it's time for me to get ready to go home. And uh, I've been working on my technology, so we're going to be doing good pretty soon. <laughs> I just want to tell you that I love you. Guys, I miss you. I see a lot of my sisters out there. That means I know that your husband is probably peeking over your shoulder. But if you'd like to take a ruck with me, that means a walk. I'd like you to meet me at the parking lot at one o'clock tomorrow, six feet apart, have your mask on, and we'll see you then, okay? Father in heaven, Listen to me. And Terrell says, I, 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 you can join him anytime. I, he'll be here all day and he's got water. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you, Lord. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We know the end of all this is, is, is happening. There's been a reason that for years, oh, Jesus... Our children have been hooked on this technology. Our children have already been, they've, they've been practicing our separation from us for years. This just brought us back together in the same room. We get another chance. And Father, we pray your blessing upon each and everyone watching. Anyone, if it's your first time here, I just want to share this with you. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want, you to, I want you to know that Jesus died on the cross for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever should believe in him and confess him, he would have everlasting, he or she would have everlasting life. If you've not prayed that prayer because it just sounds like, well, it's just words. I've done it before. I prayed it with somebody. I want you to pray it from your heart. I pray with me right now. Father in heaven, I come before you. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that you'd receive me as your son or as your daughter. I confess all my sins. All the things I've done wrong. All the thoughts I've had. Father, I'm sorry. I need a change in my life. Father, come into my heart. Send Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. And give me new life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight. I want you to. I want you to make sure that you send a little message on e, uh, I mean on Messenger on Facebook. I send it personally to me and, and I'll make sure that me and my pastors get it and we'll all and we'll all pray for you. Thank you, Terry. It's good to see you. Father in heaven, bless your people. Give them a great and wonderful night in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Jim out.